Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! We'll start the programme by talking about an issue that you tell us is incredibly important to you. Planned cuts to tax credits. The government is facing a possible defeat in the House of Lords today over those plans. It's estimated around 3 million families could, on average, be more than £1,000 a year worse off. But the government maintains the cuts should be seen as a part of a package of measures, which includes a higher minimum wage and more help with childcare costs. Well, today, the House of Lords could vote to reject the government's cut to tax credits. A motion tabled by a Lib Dem peer could kill the new plans altogether. The government has been under growing pressure to back down over the proposals to introduce the cuts in April next year. Here's Jim Reid on how much people can get under the current system. Tax credits were New Labour's little baby. Gordon Brown's way of redistributing wealth to those on low incomes and those with kids. There are two main types. First child tax credit, now claimed by four million families. 140 are paying for child tax credits. That's our main money. That's the money we need to feed our kids, to clothe our kids. It's fair enough if we've got partners yet, yeah? you know, send them out to work. But if you're a single parent like me that's got three children that needs to be looked after and cared for and I'm the only person to do it, it's, it, it's going to destroy me. It wouldn't put it past me if it drove me nuts, to be honest. Calculating tax credits is complex and depends on circumstances, but families can get more than £3,000 for their first child, whether they are in work or not. A single parent with three kids could get more than £8,000 a year. Oh, they're very important, very important. We couldn't survive without tax credits. No. No. Without, without income support, ESA, tax credits can survive. No. So if they cut them back further? If they cut them back further, then, well, I'll have to go out and do something else, and I try and get money somehow. Don't know how. Next, working tax credit, paid to low-income workers to top up their wages. Again, it's complex and depends on whether you have children. But very simply, if you're working full-time on the minimum wage, you get an extra £1,300 a year in credits, plus childcare costs. I get working tax credit and family tax credit. If the government stops that, then it wouldn't be worth me working because I'd be worse off because at the moment I get help with my rent and if they stop all that, I, the wages I get for 20 hours would cover, just cover my rent. So I'd have no money. I'd be broke. To their supporters, tax credits are one important way of getting people out of poverty and into work. Critics say the system is now costing £30 billion a year and it should be up to employers, not the state, to pay a higher wage. Jim Reid reporting. What is going to change if the government gets its way? Well, currently, if you earn less than £6,420, you get the full entitlement of working tax credits, which, as Jim said, depends on things like how many hours you've worked and how much you earn. But the income threshold, as it's known, is going to drop to £3,850 a year from April. In other words, as soon as someone earns £3,850, they will see their payments reduced. The income threshold for those only claiming child tax credits will also be cut from £16,105 to £12,125. That's not all. The rate at which those payments are cut is also going to get faster once you reach the threshold. At the moment, for every £1 people earn above the threshold, they lose 41 pence of the benefit they get. It's known as the taper rate. But from next April, the taper rate will go up, so people will lose 48 pence of every pound that they earn over the threshold. So how much are people going to lose? Well, it's thought around 3.2 million families will be around £1,300 worse off under the new changes, but it will differ from person to person. Some will lose more and some less. Labour, in the form of the Shadow Chancellor John McDonnell, are making the Chancellor George Osborne an offer if he reverses his plans.
I know what a U-turn looks like and how it can damage you, but we need a U-turn on this one. And so I've said to him, look, if you can change your, your mind on this, we will not pay, make any political capital out of this. So if the Lords do throw this out tomorrow and put it back to the government, I've said to him, if you change your mind, bring back a policy which, in which people are protected, not a political stunt, but a real protection, we will not in any way attack you for that. In fact, we'll support you. And George Osborne isn't short of suggestions from other Labour politicians. This is the Labour MP, Frank Field. Now, he actually agrees with the Chancellor on cutting the tax credit bill, but he wants it cut in a slightly different way. Under his proposal, people would get the full whack of tax credit money if they earn just under £5,000, rather than the government's figure of just under £4,000. Frank Field also wants to increase the rate at which tax credits are clawed back from people earning above £13,000 a year, or about what you get if you're on the minimum wage. I'm not against the reform, but clearly tax credits are here to stay for much, much longer than the government initially thought, and this would be a really good point of, of, of in a sense, recasting tax credits so you can take people out of the top income brands but also protect people um, at the very bottom. Well, there'll be a vote in the House of Commons about his plan on Thursday. Before that, though, there is the hurdle today to get over. In the Lords, the Labour peer, Baroness Hollis, has also put forward an amendment which could force the government to delay the cuts. Peers will also vote on what's called a fatal motion. Now, that is a rarely used tactic that's been tabled by the Lib Dems that would scrap the changes altogether. Well, the Education Secretary, Nicky Morgan, had this warning for the Lords. I think the House of Lords, as I say, should be very clear, it's a revising chamber. It's there. Often they do make good points, but they are striking down 70% of the votes that they're having. They've already uh, made it more difficult for us on childcare, for example, where they're going to slow down things. Childcare is one of those things that people really want to see delivered, our pledge on that, and the Lords are slowing it down. So without going into specifics, what you're saying to the House of Lords is be very, very careful before you do that. Think about your own future as a chamber. Well, I certainly think they should be very mindful of what they are doing. I think this, as I say, is constitutional unprecedented to strike down a statutory instrument on a taxation mm. and spending matter. Right, let's have a conversation about tax credits with various people. Conservative MP Nadim Sahawi, who supports cuts to tax credits. Conservative MP Stephen McPartland, who is against the cuts to tax credits, or the government's plans anyway. Uh, Labour peer Baroness Hollis, who put forward a motion to delay the introduction of the changes. And Jeanette Davey, a mum of six, who will be affected by the changes. Welcome, all of you. Um, Nadim Sahawi, first of all, with all the changes that the Chancellor is making, so tax credit changes, a rise in the minimum wage, and raising the threshold before people start paying tax, taking all that into account... And a 30 hours a week childcare and a £2,000 tax-free childcare as well. Yeah, if you've got children, yeah. Sure. yeah. The Chancellor says that two in ten working families will be worse off. Two in ten working families will be worse off. How is that fair? Well, looking at the other way, is eight out of ten working families will be better off. What about the claims that the government and ministers keep making, which overall, they say, when you take in taking more people out of tax, increasing thresholds, wages going up, is it true to say that most of these people affected by the tax credit changes will be better off? Uh, no, I don't think it's very likely that most of these people are going to be better off overall. Um, these are very big reductions in tax credit entitlements that are coming in next April, averaging about £1,100 per household. Uh, so it doesn't, and probably only about two fifths of these ha households contain someone. Um, pay less than the living wage, for example. So uh, for a lot of these people, there, there won't be anything else that's um, offsetting the reduction in tax credit. I'm talking about the people who will be worse I, off. I hear you. And I think there's one thing that will be very difficult to model effectively, which is the Chancellor, uh, this is the first Conservative Chancellor to come up with a national living wage. Now, what has that I've done? Let me, let me no, just, no, no, let me no, just no, 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 no. I'm not right. going to be diverted. OK. Taking all the changes that the Chancellor is making into account... Yes. Two in ten people will be worse off. Right. How do you justify that? Well, by saying to you it's eight out of ten people who will be better off. But also, the point so I was trying to make... It, it's let me just tough, give, let me it? just No, it's not. Let me just give you this very quick sort of what is happening on the ground example. Right? What is happening on the ground, on the ground is, is, is that two in ten working people, they get up every day, right. they go to work. You, a Conservative government that claims to be on the side of hard-working families, will be poorer. Well, 
What is happening on the ground is people like Morrison's, Aldi, Lidl, Ikea have all followed the Chancellor's leadership and said, we're going to raise wages now, and, not wait and despite to the national that, living wage. And despite no, that, no, that's not modelled. And not despite in, that, two in ten people no, will be worse off. No, that's not modelled into... The two in ten is, comes out from modelling just looking at... I'm using the Chancellor's figures. At, well, I hear, hear what you say, but the bit that is dynamic, which is the economy responding, which is businesses responding, you don't have to believe me. Alistair Darling himself said when we that's introduced that's tax credits... That's the former Labour Chancellor. Correct. He said I'm when actually we going with the Conservative right. Chancellor's I hear you, but, but Alistair Darling... But you're ignoring it. No, I'm not. I'm saying to you, eight out of ten people will be better off. I heard An that. average family with one person working full-time on minimum wage will be £945 how, better how off. How is that a consolation to the two in ten that will be worse no, off? Because all I would say is we have to have have taken some really tough decisions, right? We said we're going to have to cut 12 billion. How is that a consolation billion. to them? It's not. I'm saying to you, we've got to save 4.4 billion out of these reforms. Where are we going you to get them from? You don't from? have. Does he actually have, George Osborne, any wriggle room if he still wants to save four and a half billion pounds? Well, obviously there are different things you could do to save that amount of money. Uh, you could increase taxes on a different group, reduce benefits on a different group, or reduce departmental spending by more. Um, but if you're looking to take a similar amount of money from a similar sort of group of people, um, actually there aren't really many other options you can look to. These tax credits are quite well targeted on a particular group. To do it from there, well, you could make we different can, decisions. We can cut nurses and funding of the NHS. Could, we can you, cut schools. You could, you could, you could can, not introduce we, an inheritance we, tax we, cut. But you could introduce a sugar tax. Right. We can have these debates. We think we've got the right strategy. You've made a choice. We've made a to choice to make working people worse off. No, we've made a choice to create an economy that will be high wage, lower welfare, and lower tax. The the personal allowance that people will get going up to twelve and a half thousand by the end of this parliament creates that economy. That is the, it's a philosophical argument. You know, if you step back, you say, what sort of country do you want to live in? Do you want to live think... in a country where employers use the excuse of tax credits to? actually suppress wages or do you want to live in a country where employers actually pay are the you, national living wage? Are you in denial? No I'm not, not at all. I've just said to you, eight out of ten families will be better off. You're right. But we've got to make some tough decisions. We've got to about there's nothing moral or decent about crashing an economy, taxing people too Is much it moral and or borrowing too much. To make people who the, work and don't earn very people, much to people make who them don't poorer. earn very much Is will that, get even They'd be much worse off. They'd be hurt really badly if we're irresponsible and crash this economy as Labour did. 2008, the year when the global economy teetered on the brink of collapse. Markets were in turmoil. Banks like Lehman's and the Royal Bank of Scotland were going bust and it was left to the taxpayer to pay out billions of pounds in subsidies to banks that were just too big to fail. Today, the Governor of the Bank of England announced new global rules to make banks safer. He told me taxpayer bailouts would become a thing of the past. Let's face it, the system we've had up until now has been totally unfair. The banks and their shareholders and their creditors, those big institutions that hold their debt, got the benefit when things went well. But when things went wrong, the British public, you and I, and subsequent generations have picked up the bill. Events today at this drab and admittedly rather wet building in Basel, Switzerland might seem an awful long way from the real needs of the UK economy. But of course, it was only because the taxpayer was forced to spend billions of pounds bailing out the banks in 2008 that the government is today carrying huge levels of public debt. It was only because the taxpayer was forced to spend billions of pounds bailing out the banks in 2008 that the government is today carrying huge levels of public debt. Of course, what's followed are spending cuts which have affected everybody. Just, just finally and briefly, because the government talks about £12 billion worth of cuts to the welfare bill, where would the rest of it come from? This is four and a half billion. That still leaves mm. quite a lot. Yeah, sure. So uh, the other changes they're bringing in, um, so there's uh, benefits are being frozen for the next four years. That's giving you another four or five billion. And um, there's cuts um, to tax credits for new claimants. So uh, the two child limit that will be introduced uh, from April 2017. Um, some other cuts to tax credits, and they're also uh, reducing social rents uh, to reduce the housing benefit bill. Jeanette Davey, what would you like to say to Nadim Zahawi? I would just, it, it's gobsmacking really, the comments that are coming out, that 8 out of 10 people would be better off, that's great. Um, 
Businesses, though, can they really afford that living wage? That's a huge consideration. There are lots of businesses, small businesses, that employ just a few individuals. By upping that living wage, can they afford to keep those people on? Or are we going to have more unemployed people? How There's will you be affected when the changes come in in April, if they come in? Well, I'm going to be affected by I've got to find an extra £100 a month. I already work every physical hour I can. Um, I can't work anymore, so I'd really like him to have a look at what I do, have a look at my budget and see where I'm going to find £100 a month from because it is not possible for me and for millions of other people out there who are all struggling at the moment and worrying. Do you have any idea where Jeanette Davies should get that extra £100 a month from? Well, look, to be fair, I don't know all the details of Jeanette's well, case, how many just, children, just... I don't know how many children she has. Six we're, children, right, five Right, we've got, got £2,000, which is the, the tax... Uh, free childcare amount, £2,000, 30 hours of childcare. We've increased from 15 to 30 Jeanette, hours. have you taken all that into account? <laughs> the 30 hours free childcare is not available at the moment. The tax cuts are going to be happening in April. The figures simply don't go together. 30 hours, it was also for three and four-year-olds. What do I do about a two-year-old then that I have to pay for childcare for? Look, no, no one said this is not going to be tough. All I would say is it's much harder if we don't do anything, if we allow the deficit to get out of control, if we borrow too much and tax too much. You know, what are the choices here? Do we cut nurses and doctors or do we cut okay. education? We've, we've, we've Where had do that you conversation. Cut? Baroness Hollis, you're, you're uh, an unelected Labour peer. Why would it be OK for the unelected Lords to either delay or scrap what the elected House of Commons has already voted on, uh, on a couple of times? Yes. What we're doing is seeking to delay the uh, effect of these cuts so that we give existing families protection against them. These cuts would only apply to new claimants for um, tax credits. And as people move over to universal credit, which the government thinks they'll all, virtually all have done by 2020, uh, these cuts will have um, fully in play and the government will make its full savings. Uh, but the key thing about tax credits is if you're a lone parent with children and having to work reduced hours, the living wage is great, but it is not enough to live on. You need some income support on top for a while until actually you don't need it anymore. Now, Have what, you been threatened by the government, by the way? No, I don't think so. Um, if, if they try to bully me, I tease them. It's, it's fine. What about, what about the independent peers, the crossbenchers who have no allegiance to a particular party? Have they been coming under pressure? I, they certainly have. They've been, In what way? They've been strong-armed. They've been told that this is a constitutional crisis, which is a fig leaf, frankly. It's not a constitutional crisis at all. Uh, what we're doing with this is seeking to ask the Chancellor to produce transitional protection for existing families, and as wages rise, tax credits, which have been tested, fall. As people move over to UC, tax credits and UC cuts will come into play. You, so the you, you government will, heard, will make its savings. You will have heard the Education Secretary say the Chancellor is in listening mode yesterday. Might that stop peers voting either against the changes no, or to delay what them? what would happen tonight, I hope, is if they support the motion to give a delay in order to give transitional protection, mm. it gives the Chancellor the breathing space to come back with his, I hope, mitigations. If they don't support that, this statutory instrument is law tonight and Janet will feel the uh, experience of it. Uh, Stephen McPartland, tell your colleague Nadine Sahawi why you have voted against your own government on this. <coughs> I understand and I'm the first to say the tax credits need to be reformed. We're spending £30 billion a year on them. They've got completely out of control. A um, billion pound of that is lost in fraud. But my concern is around those people who aren't going to benefit from some of the changes and positive aspects that the Chancellor's announced. So for me, I've used the example of a teaching assistant who will be earning about £11,000 a year. And if she doesn't have or he doesn't have a three or four year old child, she will not benefit from the um, free childcare. They can't benefit from increases in the personal tax allowance because they don't earn enough to actually benefit from those increases in the first place. So what I want is I want to focus the debate on those people who are just going to, because of the reduction in the income threshold from um, 6,420 down to 3,850, receive a 1,200 pound cut immediately. And for me, for a teaching assistant to be losing 10% of their income and have no ability to um, make that up anywhere else is just too much for me. So the, the Chancellor has to come forward with some mitigation 
mitigation and continuing to speak out until he does come forward with that mitigation. Do you think that's likely to happen? I genuinely believe um, at the autumn statement he will come out and he will mitigate it for those families who are on the lowest incomes because at the end of the day, you know, um, the Labour Party have left these families behind. These are the families we need to be reaching out to. They get up, they go to work, they're trying. Um, there has to be reform of the tax credit system but there has to be a fairer way of doing it. Let me read a couple of messages from people who are watching you uh, discuss this around the country. Derek tweets, shame on all who voted for the tax credit cuts or any other cuts which will harm people. This email mailer says, VAR Conservatives continuing to punish the poor. I was not put on this planet to make George Osborne's spreadsheet look good. Um, a couple of messages for you, Jeanette, if I may, and I'm, you may have heard this kind of uh, sentiment before. Why should a single parent feel she has a right to have her children fed and clothed by me? Don okay. says, have unlimited children, don't worry, the rest of us will pay for it. Um, another texter says, um, your guest chose to have six children, her choice, why should my taxes fund them? Yes. Um, when I decided to have six children, I was actually married. I was a full-time teacher. We had a joint income of £60,000, owning our own house. We were not using tax credits. We were quite well off. I was also running a business part-time. Unfortunately, things happen um, and situations change as a result. I'm a single parent, never planned to be, been married for 20 years and could afford them. Um, and that's what the welfare system is for, is for when you're in situations that are beyond your control and you need that little bit of assistance. Not forever, this is a short term thing, until my children are that little bit older. I have worked since we split up, I had a baby three weeks after we split up. I went back to work when he was a few weeks old, working on my business. I work two or three businesses at the moment, I'm also employed. I work every hour as a single parent to bring my children up in the best way that I can. And what would finally, what would your message to George Osborne be? If he was sitting here, what would you say to him? I would say I understand that the country needs to make cuts. However, you are cutting it not from people who are not working, you are cutting it from working people. You say work pays, and yet those of us who are working from five in the morning until midnight quite often, and single parents that are working every minute they physically can, as well as trying to bring up their children in today's society, you are the punishing them. You are not punishing those people who aren't working. You can cut other subsidies. There are corporate subsidies that could be cut. You give millions of pounds to energy companies, for example. You give money to film companies such as Disney to make films here. There are cuts you can make without taking it from people who are working every minute that they physically can to bring up their children. Thank you very much, Jeanette. Thank you for coming on the programme. And thank, thank you, you all. Thanks for coming on the programme.